Okay, so welcome to this uh, presentation for Unit 7. Um, this is where we're delving into radiation. So this presentation is applicable for both uh, separate science and double award. Okay, so what we're going to look at in it. All right, so our objectives are as follows. We're going to try and defer, define some terms. We're going to talk about why we have radioactive decay. Um, hopefully you can then know the key differences between the three that you need to know for the qualification. Talk a little bit about background radiation, where it comes from. Um, then if we're experimenting with radioactive stuff, what, how we have to do that. Um, linked into background, we'll also talk about radon gas. Okay, um, now storage of radioactive waste like it says should be dealt with in this area of the spec however um we're going to discuss that in the next presentation because we need to know a little bit about half-life before we can do that okay as always here are um helpful lists of different videos mostly physics online or gcse physics online some cognito and some science shorts and some doodle science little videos if you're watching this on YouTube, there'll be uh, links to all of these in the description below. And obviously, don't forget the Seneca course as well. Okay, on to the actual content then. So, as far as we need to know for GCSE, all atoms contain two types of particles. They contain electrons. Here, they're the green dots that you can see going around in their, orbit, in their orbitals. And these tiny negative charges... That as far as we're concerned have negligible mass and then nucleons now nucleons are far heavier particles that reside within the nucleus of an atom now nucleons for us consist of two types of particles we can split them up protons and neutrons hopefully we should know that pro protons are positively charged neutrons have a neutral charge and as far as we're concerned here both have a relative mass of one Okay, so isotope notation. Um, you'll be used to writing this down in chemistry already. Um, and this is our way of representing all atoms um, by three things. X being their chemical symbol. A being their nucleon number, which is the number of particles in the nucleus of an atom. Now, if you study this in chemistry, this is also known as, here, this is the relative atomic mass sort of there's a subtle difference in physics it would never be a fraction because it's got to be a whole number um, obviously in chemistry because it's relative atomic mass it's an average of all of the um, isotopes so therefore sometimes they're not a whole number now Z the bottom number is the proton number and that's the number of protons in the nucleus Again, chemists call this the atomic number because it defines the uh, what element this uh, this is. Okay, so proton number defines the element. Now, isotopes, the key definition that you should learn, have the same proton number but different nucleon numbers. All right, now to calculate the number of neutrons. You have to subtract Z from A. Now, just take care. It doesn't have to be on the left-hand side. It can be the right-hand side. And if you look at some periodic tables, sometimes they have A and Z the other way up. A will always be bigger than Z. All right, so that's just something to remember with those. Now, radioactive decay. So why does it happen? Well, if you look at all isotopes, any one that's stable, i.e. pretty much what's on the periodic table, will have more neutrons than protons. All right, some of the lightest have equal numbers, but generally once they start getting heavier, they all have equal numbers of protons and neutrons. Now, some isotopes have an imbalance between the number of protons and the number of neutrons, and this makes them unstable. All right, so you might have too many protons, you might have too many neutrons. To regain stability, they emit particles from their nucleus, and this is what radioactive decay is. Now, radioactive decay is a random process. 
So what that means is any atom can decay at any time. We can't predict when an individual atom is going to decay. We just know it's going to happen. So to reduce the effect of this randomness, like with any experiment which has a randomness to it, you need to first take repeat readings. We need to take measurements over a long time. So if we're doing radioactive decay measurements, we won't just take them for a second or two seconds or 10 seconds. We might take 100 seconds. You might take a minute, say. And when we're comparing different results, we're looking for a large difference. OK, roughly rule of thumb, 50 percent. But there'll be a significant difference and you'll be able to spot it in any questions that you do. OK, so for GCSE, we deal with three main types of radioactive decay. And you should be aware of their characteristics, especially the ability to penetrate different materials. So below here we have alpha, beta and gamma particles. More on these in a minute in terms of what they are. But hopefully what you can see is that alpha particles, alpha particles are the largest. And alpha particles, you can see here, stop by things like paper or your skin. Beta particles are the next smallest. OK, and you can see that they pass through paper where they'll be diminished a little bit by the paper, but not a lot. And then they'll hit aluminium. Now, this needs to be a few millimetres of aluminium, not just any aluminium. A few millimetres of aluminium to stop the beta. Um, otherwise, it, that will also pass through. Now, gamma, gamma is a wave. Gamma has no particles. And you can see here with our gamma, that it's it's only being stopped by our thick lead, but even so, probably some of that gamma will actually make it through that lead. All right. So just to recap: alpha, paper, beta, thin aluminium, gamma, thick lead, and that's what you need to remember. Okay. So this table here, um, I'm not going to read it all out. You can read it, but basically, this table is the key information that you need to know about our alpha, beta, and gamma um, radiations. You need to be aware of the symbol. You need to know what they're made of. Key thing here being the word here, it's a helium nucleus. Um, for an alpha particle, probably as well, but um, it's worthwhile putting in here that it's a high speed electron from the nucleus, but you don't always need to put that down. It's not one of the sort of orbital electrons. It is one that has been emitted extra to that. And you can see here um, the ranges and things like that. Um, and you can see the effect on A and the effect on Z. Um, and you need to learn those numbers that alpha drops it by drops A by four and Z by two. Beta A stays the same, Z decreases by, uh, sorry, increases by one. And we'll see why that is in a minute. OK, so I'm just going to leave this up there for a, um, probably another sort of 10 seconds so people can have a look at this. Again, if you're watching this on the video, probably a good idea to pause it here to get this information down. OK, right. Let's move on. So alpha decay. So when does alpha decay occur? Alpha decay occurs when there are too many protons to be stable. OK, this means that generally we're going to have heavy nuclei, you know, things that can happily emit four particles and still remain and then hopefully get some stability. Alpha particles, we have two protons, two neutrons. All right, and because we have two protons, two neutrons, our nucleon number is going to drop by four and our proton number drops by two. And what you can see here is we have got uh, an example decay. We have americium-241 is decaying into neptunium and our alpha particle. And you can see that the alpha particle is going away at high speed because the energy that's released goes into the speed of this alpha particle. OK, so our beta particle then. So our beta particle is going to be emitted by a nuclei that have too many neutrons. Now, a beta particle, as we said before, is a high speed electron and it's basically emitted when a neutron decays into a proton. And as we've 
We had a neutron, it's become a proton. This means our proton number increases by 1. But our nucleon number stays the same. So, for example, you can see here we have carbon-14 is decaying into nitrogen-14. Nucleon number stayed the same. But our proton number's got that one. We've gone from carbon to nitrogen and our electron. And you can see in the diagram, you can see one of our uh, reds turn it into a blue. Now, gamma decay. Gamma is part of the electromagnetic spectrum. So where gamma decay comes from is basically, generally, one of our nuclei that's decayed before still has a lot of energy, still is unstable. And it wants to get rid of some of this energy. And the way it does is it emits electromagnetic rays, gamma radiation. Now, we don't have any particles change, so we don't have any change in our proton or nucleon numbers when we have gamma decay. So here is cobalt-60, very common uh, gamma emitter. And you can see before the decay, it's got lots of energy. After the decay, it's lost that energy. OK, background radiation. Now, these numbers here um, are rough numbers. They're not, um, ac well, not accurate is the wrong words to use. They're not exactly going to be what's on the exam paper. That will change depending on where they get their data from. But basically, if you leave any gamma tube, uh, any uh, GM tube running, with no radioactive source in the room, you'll still get a count. And this is due to our background radiation. Then this is natural radiation, or most of it is natural radi radiation, that occurs all the time. And, you know, we've evolved to get used to that. It's one of the reasons why we have our double helix in our um, DNA, because radiation can cause problems with that. Double helix hopefully means that those, those problems aren't um, going to manifest themselves for too long. Now, most of the background count comes from naturally occurring sources, things like radioactive rocks. So uranium, uh, not uranium, um, granite, old rocks probably have got uranium ores in them and that'll make them radioactive. Your food and your drink. Um, potassium 40 is a radioactive isotope of potassium. So foods that are high in potassium are slightly radioactive. For example, Brazil nuts and uh, bananas. Um, cosmic rays from the sun. OK, so there's quite a lot of cosmic rays we're getting from the sun that is counting to our background count, um, which means then that the higher up you go, the less atmosphere in between you and the sun, so the more cosmic rays you have. And big one, radon gas. So again, re um, released from some of our old rocks, so granites and things like that, this radon gas as part of uranium's decay. A very small part of your background count is due to man-made sources. Um, so you can hear, see here that would be like 15, 20 percent, something like that. Um, and that's from things like nuclear weapons testing. Yeah, about half a percent of that now these days. Uh, medical procedures, x-rays, ionizing radiations. Some of your background dose throughout the year will be from um, x-rays. This is why for you who's having an x-ray, the dose is small enough that they don't worry about. But if you're the radiographer who is going to be doing hundreds of x-rays a day, they worry about that. So that's why they leave the room. So whenever we do radioactive decay um, experiments, we must take this into account. The way we do this is we take a count with no source near the detector. OK, and we take then this count away from anything with a source as our way of removing the background. Um, and I've seen that come up on exam questions. I've seen them try and trick you with that. So just bear that in mind that you need to take away any background count from any count that you are given. OK, so radon gas. Now, radon gas is emitted from the decay of uranium. I spoke about this from very old rocks. Now, radon gas by itself is an alpha emitter. Being an alpha emitter it means that it poses very little danger outside the body. However, radon gas is heavier than air, so if you inhale it, you have two problems. One, 
you can't breathe it out easily because it sinks into your lungs. And two, being an alpha emitter, those alpha particles can't get out of the body. They're very ionising, so they can cause an awful lot of damage when they get in. However, like I said, radon, heavier than air, which means it's very easy to deal with in homes. So we have things like radon sumps. Okay, so if you live in a house in a high radon area, you might find you've got one of these underneath. Um, and basically what you do, radon sinks down into that. And when it gets to a level, it's just um, pumped outside where it'll disperse to a low enough level to be safe again. You'll also find that build on, uh, buildings in high radon areas will also have detectors fitted. So um, one of my previous schools was built on old granite. And we did have these things put in the school. Um, they never went off, but we had to have them. Um, and if you buy a house on rocks like this, you'll have to have a radon survey. Um, if any questions on radon gas ever get asked, it will be most likely a, a data question. So it'll be something to read and for you to answer. OK, now, there's no over to you here. All right. Um, because most of the questions rely on stuff on Half-Life, We've put it all in the Half-Life video, so um, that's in Topic 8. Okay, so uh, well done for making it to the end. Uh, thanks for watching it. Uh, I know some of these are pretty long. Um, and like I said, if they help, leave us a comment. If they don't help, leave a comment. If you'd rather the review bits, which make them really long, I'll put in separate videos. Again, let me know. It's not a difficult job to do. And I can put them in separate videos rather than putting them in the main video. And it will make basically two short videos. Um, please like, please subscribe. Um, and hopefully they, they help with your qualifications.